I am Dr. Vijay, Associate Professor of Economics, PG and Research Department of Economics, ADM College, Nagapati. Today's topic is Introduction to Macroeconomic Analysis. First, we have to see the introduction of macroeconomics. In term, macro was first used in economics by Ranger French in 1933. But as a methodological approach to economic problems, it originated with the mercantilists in the 16th and 17th centuries. They were concentrated with the economic system as a whole. In the 18th century, the Sophisiocrats adopted it in their economics to show the circulation of wealth among the three classes, represented by farmers landowners and the cereals classes. Malthus, Sismondi and Marx in the 19th century dealt with macroeconomic problems. Waldraus, Wichel and Fischer were the modern contributors to the development of macroeconomic analysis. Before Keynes, certain economists like Cashel, Marshall, Pigou, Robertson, Hayek and Hartree developed a theory of money and general prices in the decade following the First World War. But credit going, going to Keynes who finally developed a general theory of income, output and employment in the work of the Great Depression. Now, we have to see the nature of macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is the study of aggregate or averages the covering the entire economy, such as total employment, income, national income, national output, total investment, total consumption, total savings, aggregate supply, aggregate demand and general price level, wage level and cost structure. In other words, it is aggregative economics which examines the interrelations among the various aggregates, their determination and causes of fluctuations in them. Thus, in the world of Professor Agley, macroeconomics deals with economic affairs in the large. It concerns the overall dimensions of economic life. Macroeconomics is also known as the theory of income and employment or simply income analysis. It is concerned with the problems of unemployment, economic fluctuations, inflation or deflation, international trade and economic growth. The observe of macroeconomics is microeconomics. Microeconomics is the study of the economics actions of individuals and small groups of individuals. The study of particular firms, particular households, individual prices, wages, incomes, individual industries, particular commodities. But macroeconomics deals with aggregate of these quantities, not with individual incomes, but with the national income, not with individual prices, but with the price level not with individual output but with the national output. Both microeconomics and macroeconomics involve the study of aggregates but aggregation in microeconomics is different from that in macroeconomics. For example, aggregates, numerous firms or even products, consumer demand for shoes is an aggregate of the demands of many households and the supply of shoes in an aggregate of the production of many firms. Now we have to see the scope and importance of macroeconomics. First one is to understand the working of the economy. Through the macroeconomics we have to know or the study of macroeconomic variables in, is indivisible for understanding the working of the economy. Our main economic problems are related to the behavior of total income, output, employment and the general price level in the entire economy. 
Then the next one is in economic policies. Through the macroeconomics is extremely useful from the point of economic policy. Modern governments, especially of the underdeveloped economics, are confronted with innumerable national problems. They are the problems of overpopulation, inflation, balance of payments, general underproduction, etc. Then the third one is in general unemployment. The Keynes theory of employment is an exercise in macroeconomics. The general level of employment in an economy depends upon the effective demand which in turn depends on aggregate demand and aggregate supply function. In national income, the study of macroeconomics is very important for evaluating the overall performance of the economy in terms of national income. This leads to the construction of the data and national income. In economic growth, the economics of growth is also a study in macroeconomics. It is on the basis of macroeconomics that the resources and capabilities of an economy are evaluated. In monetary problems, it is in terms of macroeconomics that monetary problems can be analyzed and understood properly. In business cycle, Further, macroeconomics and approach to economic problems started after the Great Depression. For understanding the behavior of individual units, for understanding the behavior of individual units, the study of macroeconomics is imperative. Demand for individual products depends upon aggregate demand in the economy. Now we have to see microeconomics and the macroeconomics these are all have so many differences between these two now we have to see the difference between microeconomics and macroeconomics the word micro has been derived from the greek word micros which means small Microeconomics is the study of economic actions of individuals and small groups of individuals. It includes particular households, particular firms, particular industries, particular commodities and individual prices. Macroeconomics is also derived from the Greek word macros which means large it deals with aggregates of these quantities, not with individual incomes, but with the national income. Not with individual price, but with the price levels. Not with individual outputs, but with the national output. Then, the second difference between these two, the objective of microeconomics on demand side is to maximize utility whereas on the supply side is to minimize profits at minimum cost. The objectives of macroeconomics are full employment, price stability, economics growth and favorable balance of payments. The third difference is the basic microeconomics is the price mechanism which operates with the help of demand and supply prices. These forces help to determine the equilibrium price in the market. The basics of macroeconomics is national income, output and employment which are determined by aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Microeconomics is based on different assumption concerned with the rational behavior of individuals. Over the phrase citrus paribus is used to explain the economic laws. Macroeconomics bases its assumption on such variable 
as the aggregate volume of output of an economy with the extent to which its resources are employed with the size of the nation and with the general price level microeconomics is based on partial equilibrium analysis which helps to explain the equilibrium condition of an individual a firm an industry and a sector macroeconomics is based on general equilibrium analysis which is an extensive study of a number of economic variables its their interrelations microeconomics the study of equilibrium condition or analyzed at a particular period but it does not explain the time element macroeconomics is considered as a static analysis on the other hand macroeconomics is based on time lags rates of change and cost and expected value of the variables now we have to see the different types of economics in macro macro statics macro dynamics and comparative statics now let us see one by one the first one is macro statics the word statics is derived from the greek word stati which means brings to a stand still in physics it means a state of rest where there is no movement in economics it implies a state characterized by movement at a particular level without any change it is a state according to clark where five kinds of changes are conspicuous by their absence static economics deals with relations and the process on the assumption of uniformity and persistence of either the absolute or relative economic quantities involved now let us see the diagrammatical explanation of macro static here we have to see the uh, two concepts in x axis national income and output in y axis represents consumption and the investment now we have to see the consumption level consumption plus investment level c c plus i then we have to take 45 degree line this is the function the y is the function of c yeah, c plus s therefore the entire according to keynes the entire income is divided into two parts one is consumption another one is savings that is according to keynesian psychological law the entire income it is divided into the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save of an individual here we have to take the equilibrium of e here the the income is y the consumption and investment line that is intersect the income line that is said the equilibrium of e in this level the entire economical activities are stand in a one level stand in a one level this is called the macro static so the consumption and investment it gives o y level of income in the entire economy this is called the situation of macro static next now we have to see another one more important concept of macro dynamics economic dynamics on the other hand is the study of change of acceleration or declaration it is the analysis of the process of change with the continuous through time an economy may change through time in two ways without changing its pattern and by changing its pattern economic dynamics relates to the latter type of change in a dynamic economy rate of change and the economic system takes time to adjust itself accordingly now we have to see the diagrammatic explanation of macro dynamics now here we have to take two components 
x axis represents national income and output y axis represents consumption and investment now we have to see c plus i and c plus i plus delta i here the increment of investment increment of investment it means the investment it will be move from i to delta i here we have to take c so many equilibriums e b d c e and all that here the economical income and output it will be move from o y to o y 1 this is the changes of income this is the changes of income in macro dynamics when the economical activities it will be move from one level to another level especially in income and output through or due to change in investment so in that way the equilibrium is shifted from e to e1 here the income is increased from oy to oy1 this is called macro dynamics yes now we see the the third concept of comparative statics in macroeconomics we have to see three different way of economics one is macro dynamics macro statics macro dynamics now the third one is comparative statics comparative static is a method of economic analysis which was first used by the german economist f ofner in 1916 schupiter described it as an evaluationary process by a success of static models in the words of schupiter described it as an evaluationary process by a succession of static models. This methods of procedure is known as comparative statics to be precious. Comparative statics is the method of analysis in which different equilibrium situations are compared. Now we have to see the diagrammatical explanation of comparative statics. Here we have to see two diagrams. First one is we here we have to take two components that is x axis represents quantity, y axis represents price. Then we have to take demand and supply lines. D D1, yes is the supply line. Here the demand is shifted from D to D1. Here the equilibrium also shifted from E to E1. Then we have to see the same supply level. Here the quantity of the commodity is OQ to OQ1 due to shift in demand. Whether the, in the economy the house so much of population the increase in consumer uh, um, purchasing power that way the demand will be shifted from D to D1. In that situation automatically the price also increased from A to A1. Due to increase in demand, there is no changes in the supply. Here we have to take two equilibriums. The equilibrium is shifted from E to E1 due to increase in demand. Now we pass on to another diagram. Here we have to take the x axis represents time, y axis represents national income. Here we have to take two uh, different times T1, T2. For example, you have to take uh, one. Uh, 19, uh, 1910 or 1920 or 2000, 2000 and 2010 likewise you have to uh, consider the time t1 t2 then the national income also increased from y1 to y2 here that we here we have to see two equilibriums a and b the equilibrium is shifted from a and b we have to take forward shifting means equilibrium that is the national income is increased from y1 to y2 in case you have to take the consideration of backward shift the equilibrium is reduced from b to a in that situation the national income also reduced from y2 to y1 here we have to take the consideration of when the economy is static or when the economy is in dynamic but in comparative static it will be compared to these two situations when the economy may be in static, the equilibrium may be A. Whether the economy is shifted or changed, 
from one level to another level in that situation automatically the investment will be increased from i to delta i in that situation the equilibrium also shifted from a to b this is the explanation of comparative static economy now we move on to stock and flow concepts the aggregate of macroeconomics are of two kinds some are stocks typically the stock of capital which is a timeless concept even in period analysis a stock must be specified at a particular moment stock is the quantity of an economic variable relating to a point of time for example store of cloth in a shop at a point of time is stock flow is the quantity of an economic variable relating to a period of time the concepts of stock and flow are used in the analysis of both microeconomics and macroeconomics in microeconomics the price theory or microeconomics the concepts of stock and flow are related to the demand for and supply of goods the market demand and supply of goods at a point of time are expressed as stock but the price is neither a stock nor a flow variable because it does not need a time dimension nor is it a stock quantity in fact it is a ratio between the flow of cash and the flow of goods in macroeconomics the concepts of stock and flow are used more in macroeconomics or in the theory of income output and employment money is a stock whereas the spending of money is a flow wealth is a stock a income is a flow saving by a person within a month is a flow while the total saving on a day is a stock the lending by a bank is a flow and its outstanding loan is a stock now we have to see the conclusion part of this in this chapter we have to see the introduction of macroeconomics nature and scope of macroeconomics the difference between micro and macroeconomics also we have to see static economy dynamic and comparative static economy these powerpoint include the introduction importance of macroeconomics thank you